Hey everyone, it's Movie Lover 120 here, and I'm here with a brand new franchise ranking, and this franchise ranking is going to be for none other than a franchise I did a review series on, just already reviewed the sixth movie that came out this weekend. So now, like how Cody Leach does it, I'm going to re-rank the whole entire franchise of this. And that's of course, obviously, the Jurassic Park franchise. So yeah, I'm going to be ranking all six movies from worst to best. My re-ranking of them and my thoughts on this whole series. So anyway, with that being said, let's get started with number six. At number six, bottom of the barrel, obviously, is of course Jurassic Park 3. This film has just about everything you do not ever want in a Jurassic Park movie. The plot nor the acting is on par with any previous efforts. Constituous absence of Jeff Goldblum in the role of Ian Malcolm is a major drawback. Supporting characters William H. Macy and Taylor, you only play the couple and they're really bad in this film. They're annoying to watch and over the top to add to it. And they even, this movie even tries to make you care about them, even though they're clearly the villains here as they manipulate Alan Grant for their own needs, making it hard for you to care about them. There's also this character called Billy, who's possibly the biggest idiot in this film. He's meant to be Grant's assistant, but he does everything against him and literally acts like an idiot, even though he is meant to be an expert on dinosaurs. And this, also, this movie, like you know, can even be seen as a big fuck you to the T-Rex, and even has some infamous dream where a dinosaur talks. So yeah, Jurassic Park 3, fuck this movie, and I will never watch this shit fest ever again. At number 5 is probably going to be 2018's Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Like what many people would say about this, where they're escaping from the island is great and quite exciting, sets up the film pretty well, plus Claire is a bit more likable here. However, once the major action scene is over and they have to focus on the main story thing, things just start to go downhill once they get back to the city. I think what bothers me the most is that a lot of the writing is just lazy and not well thought through or truly creative. Instead, we get more of the same themes from the original Jurassic Park films, plus some more from Jurassic World, such as mutant dinosaur and evil corporate guys. The new characters are barely any interesting. This movie makes people think that Malcolm is back, but he only has two damn scenes in the whole movie and he does nothing. And also, a majority of the new characters, such as the two activists, are not even interesting and just ear gray my head into this movie. Now, like I've already said, with Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, I like the first half, but the second half just ruins this entire movie for me. And at number four, the one that just came out and I just reviewed, Jurassic World Dominion, the most recent one on this list. This is one I was slightly disappointed in. The Jurassic World accumulates its story with a rather dull note, especially considering the promise of great momentum that they had worked so hard to build earlier. Basically, it's kind of just a rehash of the franchise's tired formula instead of branching to something more different and extremely daring. The presence of the legendary characters deserved a joyful welcome, despite the fact that it didn't really make the necessary splash to excite the story. They graced the screen only for nostalgia and some fan service, and I did miss an emotional attachment to the characters since I kind of knew throughout the movie that nothing super bad was going to happen to them. I kind of missed that feeling from the original Jurassic Park movie, during which plenty of important characters lost their heads and lives. The music and sound design was on point, but nothing spectacular in my opinion, though the pacing and runtime was just about kind of right to get everything without leaving too many plot holes. Now, I like the scenes with Alan, Ellie, and Ian, don't really like the scenes with Owen and Claire, and I definitely don't like Macy at all in this movie. All in all, like, Fallen Kingdom is not terrible, but it definitely could have been better. At number three is going to be for the new the start of the new trilogy from 2015, and that is Jurassic World, the first film that started the new trilogy. Now, while the third best of the series, I find this movie to be a bit overrated. What I like here is that the dinosaurs are just as amazing as before, the return of the Gullim Gullimianus, the Palasophorus, the, the Petronodon, the Stegosaurus, the Triceratops, the Phil Velociraptus, and the Tyrannosaurus Rex, after his dumbass send-off in third film as well as some new additions like the Ankylosaurus, the Apatosaurus, the Mosaurus, and the monstrous Indominus Rex. There's some pretty good acting, like for example, Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard have done some great performances, but speaking of Howard though, her character Claire just almost also ruins this movie for me. Actually, almost all of the characters, except for Owen, nearly ruined the movie for me. Specifically, the oldest kid in this, of the two kids are in this Zack who is probably such a dumbass in this, and he's just an unlikable snob, you just can't even sit through the whole entire time you're watching this. And plus, plus this movie even rehashed the first film at many scenes of the movie, it doesn't really try to be a bit more original. Now, when it comes to Jurassic World, the first Jurassic World from 2015, I don't hate it, but personally, I think it is a little bit overhyped. At number two, the one that gets me in trouble every single time, The Lost World, Jurassic Park from 1997. 
Once again, still my favorite of all the Jurassic Park sequels to this very day. Creating a worthy fall to a major blockbuster is no easy task, but if all the easy places are in the right place, it is not impossible. Like, for four years after the enormous success of the first film, Steven Spielberg took control of the director's chair once more in an effort to enhance the franchise and add on to his already spectacular legacy. Did he succeed in the eyes of most critics? Well, no, but I applaud Spielberg for an admirable effort in creating another cloud freezer, even if it didn't match up to the high expectations. Like, I was happy to see Jeff Goldblum replace his role as Ian Malcolm, because he's my favorite character in this series, and since and they make Malcolm now more aware of the dangers of John Hammond's activities, and his personality is a little less goofy and more serious this time around compared to his previous adventure where he was kind of the comic relief. The music from John Williams is once again amazing, his music always tells a story, and the film is no different. Each score he wrote for this film matches the story and plot each time you hear his music, you can tell some love went into these scores, and I really love the dinosaurs going around San Francisco, or, or, yeah, especially, like, I really like that this one focused on Ian Malcolm a lot more, and um, so yeah, when it comes to The Lost World Jurassic Park, much, most people might not like it, but I still love the sequel to this very, very day. And finally, at number one, the best spot is of course, obviously, Jurassic Park. Yes, by far the most obvious choice for the number one spot. This movie till this very day is always one of Spielberg's best film of the 90s to this very day and still the best dinosaur film of all time. Jurassic Park is a perfect movie. Not only does it feature a gripping storyline, memorable characters, and non-stop action, but it also features the amazing special effects which revolutionize special effects, specifically CGI effects in future movies. When the characters first enter Jurassic Park, you see the many dinosaurs in the distance, and the theme, one of the greatest movie themes of all time, is playing in the background. Your jaw just drops, and the dinosaurs just look awesome. Sometimes they're CGI, sometimes they're animatronic, but sometimes they're amazing. But well, actually, in this movie, that's literally all the time. One of my favorite scenes is when the T-Rex is attacking the car and a flashlight shines at its eye and the eye deleates. That just shows how detailed and alive these dinos are. And the dialogue and acting is so good that you feel as though you're there with the characters. It does drag sometimes, but it's easy to get past that. And when they're in peril, you feel as though you're in danger too. I just can't stress how sustainable the suspense in Jurassic Park is. All in all, Jurassic Park is still a phenomenal movie to watch in this very era, and I still recommend it to dinosaur lovers and film buffs to this very exact day even years later. And there we go! That's pretty much it for my review, or ranking, I mean, of all the six Jurassic Park movies. So, I want to know in the comments below if you guys saw Dominion yet, what did you think about it, and how would you rank all the movies, or five movies if you haven't seen Dominion yet, or if you have seen Dominion, then I want to know how would, how would you rank all six of the movies. So, I'd like to know opinions, different opinions, and then, but I like also, but just try to respect others' opinions, guys, because this is not a disrespectful channel. But until then, guys, that'll be it for this ranking. Thank you all for watching, and if you like this and want to see more, and don't forget to like, subscribe to Movie Lover 120.